So in this lecture of the genetics unit, we're going to talk about uniparental disomy. So just to give you an overview here first of uniparental disomy, so what it is, why it's important. So normally across the board for each type of gene, you have two alleles. You get one from dad and then one from mom. And in this case, we'll be talking about for these diseases, chromosome 15. So you have, remember, two copies of chromosome 15, one from the paternal side, from one, the other from the maternal side. Now, normally expression of one of these genes is sufficient for a normal phenotype. So if you knock one of these out, it doesn't matter because you still have the other one expressed and that's sufficient for to have, again, a normal phenotype. Where you get clinically significant conditions is when you lose both of these genes because if you lose both of them, then there's no expression of it at all. Now, an example of where this can occur is, say, one allele gets imprinted or inactivated or methylated, and then the other allele gets deleted by either some kind of mutation or microdeletion, and then again, a clinically significant condition would arise. And this, these are the mechanisms by which prader willi and Angelman syndromes occur. Now, these diseases, they're particularly rare, but they're important and they're really high yield for biochemistry exams and board exams because they illustrate these genetic concepts. So first, Angelman syndrome. Again, we're talking about chromosome 15. And the way this generally develops is that the maternal gene is deleted somehow, and then the paternal gene is imprinted. So let's go down to the figure here and explain. So normal, this is in normal cells and normal individuals. You have your chromosome 15 from the paternal side, your chromosome 15 from the maternal side. Now the paternal gene is methylated normally, this particular gene on chromosome 15, and it's silenced as a result of that. And then the maternal gene is expressed. And so that's enough for a normal phenotype, and hence the patient is normal. And this process is what's called imprinting. And it's actually sex-specific imprinting because you're silencing the paternal side and not the maternal side. Now, because it's sex-specific imprinting does not mean that this is a sex-driven inheritance, or such as an X-linked recessive or X-linked dominant inheritance. Both males and females are affected with this condition. So first, we have microdeletion, which can occur. So again, the paternal side is methylated, which is normal for this gene. However, the maternal gene has been microdeleted. Now, since both genes are not being expressed, you develop Angelman syndrome. Now, another example of where this can occur is when you inherit both copies of chromosome 15 from your dad. So they're paternally derived, and this is a result of non-disjunction that occurs during meiosis 1. So let's go to the whiteboard for a second here just to look at how this happens during meiosis 1. So this is going to be meiosis 1 in your dad. So you have, let's just say, 14, 15, and chromosome 16. And you have two copies, right? So you've replicated them. And so now you're getting ready to split these up into the first round of, of division into the two daughter cells that will eventually then also split to give you your four final daughter cells. So if you have non-disjunction happen, so you're going to equally split your 14s, equally split your 16s, and then what will happen is, is these will get carried into one cell during the division. And so you have this here, where you have you know, your 14 here. Problem is then you're going to have two chromosome 15s, and then again you'll have normally one chromosome 16. Same thing here, you'll have one 14, one set of 16s here, and then zero 15s here. So then when you go to divide, you'll have, you'll pull these apart, and you'll pull these apart. Each of these will get pulled apart. So you'll have each of these get pulled apart, and then obviously the 16 will get pulled apart. So you, again, you'll have one 14, and then you'll have two 15s and one 16, and that'll be for both daughter cells. So both daughter cells will have one 14, two 15s, and one 16. Over here, you're going to normally pull these apart so that each daughter cell will have a 14, zero 15s, and then one 16. They'll have, again, one 14, zero 15s, and one 16. Now, where this comes into play is, is if you had non-disjunction of chromosome 15 in the father, and that gets inherited, what you're going to end up with is that both genes are methylated, which is normal. And as a result of that, both genes are silenced, and then again, you develop Angelman syndrome. So what's really important to know here is that both of these mechanisms, both microdeletion and then paternal uniparental disomy, the name of the gene isn't really specifically important to know. What's I guess you could be important to know is that the genes involved in neurodevelopment, and that would explain some of the manifestations of this disease clinically, which we'll talk about on the next slide. 
and specifically, these patients, they exhibit mental retardation. Their demeanor is characterized by happy, social, puppet-like, swinging arms and legs. They have impaired language skills, which differentiates this disease from Williams syndrome. And patients with Williams syndrome actually have good language skills, but they otherwise present pretty similarly with mental retardation and this type of demeanor. Angelman syndrome patients also have seizures and ataxia, again, that neurodevelopment involvement. Now, unfortunately, there's no cure for Angelman syndrome. The clinical management is typically comprised of seizure medications to help control seizures because that can obviously be a pretty debilitating manifestation of this disease. So now we'll talk about prader willi syndrome, which again involves chromosome 15. However, in this case, the paternal gene is deleted and the maternal gene is imprinted, which is the opposite of Angelman syndrome. And it's also a different gene. I don't want to have any confusion here. If you notice in the diagram for Angelman syndrome, we had the gene up here. So this is a different gene. However, it's also on chromosome 15. And in this case, the gene on the maternal chromosome is methylated and silenced, and the paternal gene is expressed to give you that normal phenotype. And so this would be maternal imprinting. And again, just like in Angelman syndrome, even though this is sex-specific imprinting, both males and females are affected. So the mechanisms by which this occurs First, you can have microdeletion of the paternal gene, and then since the maternal gene is methylated, you have no expression of this gene at all, and then you develop prader willi syndrome. Another example here is maternal uniparental disomy. All right, so briefly here, we'll go to the whiteboard just to show it again in mom. So this will be meiosis one in the mother. And so you have two sets of chromosome 14 because you've duplicated them, getting ready for cell division. Two sets of 15 and then two sets of, of 16. So you split these up, and you'll equally distribute your chromosome 14s among these cells. However, you'll get two of these 15s, because these essentially went to this side, and then this cell will have zero 15s, and then again, your 16s were equally distributed as well. So then you get into the daughter cells here. These are each gonna get pulled apart. So you're going to have one 14, two 15s, and one 16. And that'll be the same for this daughter cell as well. And then over here, these daughter cells, where you'll have one 14, zero 15s, and then one 16 for each. Now, what ends up happening is, is that in the offspring, they receive both chromosome 15s from the mother side because of this non-disjunction. And so... Since this gene is normally methylated on the maternal chromosome, you're going to have no expression because there's no paternal chromosome here to give you that normal gene expression. So again, these patients will also develop prader willi syndrome because both genes are silenced. Now, the clinical features of prader willi syndrome, mental retardation, they have obesity by ages 2 to 5, they have hyperphagia, which is, you know, constant hunger, which probably leads to this. They, they also have hypogonadotropic hypogonadism, and then they also have small hands and feet. And so these are typical characteristics that you want to be paying attention to in question stems when you encounter these on exams. All right, so that closes out our discussion of uniparental disomy and of prader willi syndrome and Angelman syndrome.